Hello, everybody. Welcome to Composer Class. I'm here today with Matt Novak. And I'm really excited to have you here today, Matt. Welcome to the Composer Class. Oh, well, thank you so much, Sebastian. It's great to be here. Yeah, love Happy to have, have you. Chat. Yes, absolutely. I, I want to <laughs> really dive deep into to your work and what you do and some of the wisdom that you um, accumulated along the way. So first, um, let people know who you are, what you do, and maybe some, some milestones in your career so far. Okay, cool. Um, my name is Matt Novak. I'm a uh, film and TV composer in Los Angeles. Um, I mainly do comedies. Um, that's been my bread and butter. Um, I do other things. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've been working for almost 20 years uh, in the industry. Um, uh, went to undergrad at Northern Illinois University. I have a uh, big, you know, bachelor's degree in composition there. And then I went to the University of Southern California, uh, USC, for their uh, film and TV scoring program. So that, that, and that's how I, that's you know how I started. Uh, they got me my first job. I started as a in a music library called Select Tracks. Mm -hmm. um, uh, career mil milestones. Um, my breakout role or my breakout gig uh, was Children's Hospital for mm -hmm. Adult Swim, uh, which ran for seven series. Seven seasons, I should say. Um, um, that's a silly, absurdist comedy. Um, I, loved, I loved working on that show. Um, let's see. What, what are some other career milestones? Um, I mean, the breakout is great. Uh, we can talk about that. I mean, I, I love yeah. that you are doing comedy because I think comedy for me is probably the hardest genre to do. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I don't, I don't mean to talk over you. Were you were you gonna... No, no, no. no. Don't. Oh, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> um, it's interesting. So I do mainly do absurdist comedies, which is like the comedy. These characters are put in weird, bizarre situations, but the um, the comedy comes from them believing these bizarre situations are real. Um, so the characters are the actors are really invested in portraying it seriously. So then the music I write, I write, I, a lot of the stuff comedies I do, I score it straight. I score it like a drama mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we're not making fun of the characters. We're making fun of the situation. So it's, yeah. it's, it's a lot of serious music scored for, uh, for dumb jokes. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> and yeah, but, I'm sorry. But, but I think this makes, makes it probably even funnier. So because you... Everyone knows this is such such an absurd situation they're in, but everyone yeah. thinks that's real. But I know better, right? As yeah. a viewer, I know oh, exactly. That's not, that can't be real. So that's awesome. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. The one the one thing that that comes to mind for me, I don't know if you've watched Severance, but this, I love Severance. Yeah, this is. Yeah. I think this is probably the. I mean, this is really dark or gets really dark very quick, but um, uh, it has this absurdity in it because it's like what. You, you know, yeah. So yeah, this is this was my first reaction to that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's, absolutely. that's a good that's a good uh, example. That's a good poll. Uh -huh. um, the score is brilliant as well. So. It's great. It's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, um, no, no, no. Don't apologize. <laughs> that's not good. Yeah. Um, um, so that's so. But are there also funny moments in these? Like, where you have to score the funny because. I think probably the relief of like being in this absurd um, situation and then the relief coming, I don't know. I don't know how, how it works in these com comedies really, but yeah. Yeah. I think still, I, I can't ignore the comedy. I still mm -hmm. have to be aware of the funny moments, any punchlines or like clever lines, you know, that I want that they, the showrunners, um, you want to make sure to emphasize like, Hey, this line's really funny. And usually like if, if I laugh at it, like, okay, I gotta make sure I, I, uh, I have to give space to it. And it's, it's, it comes with like giving space for jokes without commenting that they are jokes. Uh, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's, you know, I'm not going to do plucky strings with like a little ding every time there's a joke. Yeah. Cause that would actually, that would have 
very uh, realistically would have the effect of making things less funny. Mm -hmm. If you just let the comedy breathe and live in the space, you know, then the, the audience will pick it up and will yeah. react to it. But if you tell the audience that this is a joke and you need to laugh at it, that's, that's the opposite of what we want to do with the score. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, as much as we, we'd want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, uh, exactly. Yeah. But, you know, but I, I want to go, I mean, I want to go back to just right at the beginning. So there was for sure, there was a point in your life where you, okay, knew you either go the uh, normal route, like going to a day job, like a normal job or something, or decide to go follow your heart and follow, like let the passion, your passion guide you. And yeah. I, I would like to know when this was and how, the struggles and the what kind of like thought process was was that yeah it's it's interesting like thinking about like kind of just like <laughs> 20 25 years ago um <laughs> but growing up i always knew i wanted to be a film composer mm -hmm. um that was like you know in high school those were the albums i listened to or film scores mm -hmm. um so I always knew it, but I was, I was also started off as a percussionist. Um, I was a decent percussionist, which I can say because I don't really play anymore. Um, but, uh, <laughs> um, I went to college for percussion performance and a, um, a secondary study with composition. Um, and then I, uh, developed some problems with my wrists which kind of forced me to give up percussion, at least at the time. I'm slowly getting back into it. Um, but it made me pivot to composition. And I, I loved it. And it, But, you know, it's, it, is, it was tough. It was a struggle. Um, I am very grateful. I had a very supportive family, um, very supported, supportive fiancé at the time, now my wife. Um, who just like knew this is what I wanted to do. Um, I, you know, there was t tough times, of course, yeah. that maybe, you know, <laughs> beginning of COVID for one, like, Oh, yes, the, this, yeah, this was the latest, yeah. but you know, the beginning, yeah. <laughs> the beginning alone is sometimes it's just so much like ups and downs and then you thought you made it and then it crumbles out all down again. So yeah, I, I, I completely get it. Yeah, I, and, and I feel like that's the that's the industry, not just for composers, but for mm, actors, no. writers. It's, you know, you get busy, you work, you're feeling good, and then the job's over. And you're like, oh, okay, uh, what's next? When's my next yeah. job coming? Right. Um, so it's, I, and, and, you know, it was a long struggle, ups and downs, um, lots of questioning. Um if I really wanted to pursue this career, if I, you know, am I good enough to pursue this career? You know, stuff like questioning myself, a little bit of imposter syndrome, and just, you know, just keep working. I, I, I've been thankful that I've been relatively busy. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, people like working with me. I like working, you know, I have a group of, people that I work with a lot that I really enjoy. And um, so I, I think that helps it too. It's just, you know, it just keeps, keep grinding. And, um, yeah. but uh, yeah, it's, it's weathering the, the, the spaces in between projects, you know, as, as the right. key, because it's like, you can't, it's like, You know, at some point, I feel like maybe in the past few years, I, um, or just like gradually, you know, getting more and more confident that like, okay, the job's done, next job's going to come. You know, I can keep in contact with people, just keep uh, grinding, um, rather than, I think, you know, early on, I would kind of get worried. 
you know, it's like, when's my next job going to come? Is, am I going to, am I going to get a next job? You know, so right. it's just, yeah. it's just, it's always, you know, in the back of my mind. It's know, so funny like, because, you know, we do the best we can. We get like praise from our coworkers or collaborators and they come back time and time again. And yet we still question if, we gonna make it or if we're gonna get the next job if 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 we were good enough if it was enough for them or you know it's so funny that within us is this voice that always like tries to put doubt in our mind and in our thinking yeah. even though i mean you do it for 20 years now and successfully uh, as well actually we should ask we shouldn't be doubtful anymore right but still Because it's, I think it's because we have, we put so much of our own being into the music and into the career mm -hmm. and our whole life basically accumulates to this one moment where you put the note on the paper, because it's like all the experiences, everything and our heart and our feelings, our emotions all come down to this one note or this one score or whatever. And yeah. this is, I think why it's so, because it's, it, you, when you get questions about your music, it's hard to draw a line not to take it personal and say, okay, maybe they don't like me or, but you know, I learned it over the years. I'm, I'm in the business for a long time as well. And I'm like, you know, yeah. if they don't like the music, it's, it's just so much taste stuff. But I, I think it's it, because I talked to many of these, of, 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 of people like you, that like composers that actually very successful. This questions, everyone has this, this question, what's going to happen next? I did my studio yeah. feature and then, okay, I don't have no idea where the next job is going to come from. Yeah, exactly. And especially with the strike, the writer's strike right now. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and it, it's, yeah, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, you just keep grinding, keep demoing. Um, I'm also someone, I like to keep learning, just keep mm -hmm. studying and keep brushing up on, you know, courses I took in college just to make sure I'm on, you know, still learning and still on top of my game. Um, um, and it's also, it's, I'm, I'll look back at a score and like, I'll enjoy the score, but I can look, I can pick it like, you know what, I could have done something a little different there. And um, so I just always kind of, that doesn't help, but I'm like self-critical of my own stuff. Um, But, uh, but that's part of the process, you know, yeah. it's part of the process. Right. Yeah. And, and describe to, for me, how, how does the process go for you? Like, um, if we can even start at demoing or at like, like, is, is it that you are interested in a project project and have your agent or yourself reach out to the, to the showrunners or is it the other way around? And what, what happens next? It's a, It's a mix to start. Mm -hmm. Most of my jobs I've gotten have been through referrals. Um, like, hey, so and so recommended you for this job. You know, uh, let's have a meeting. Yeah. Send some samples. Um, um, that's how I got uh, my latest project. Um, you know. Uh, Miracle Workers End Times, which mm -hmm. premieres on Monday. Um, yes. <laughs> one of my bosses, one of my recurring bosses ever since Children's Hospital, David Wayne, uh, directed the first two episodes. And mm -hmm. um, they were, the show had never had a composer before. They did three seasons, all music library. I think they had, wow. yeah, I think they may have had like a handful of bespoke cues written. Uh, I know the first two seasons has some songs. I'm not sure if they were like uh, library tracks that they sang over, um, but um, not sure about that. Um, but yeah, as far as there, so in that case, the showrunners, you know, decided they wanted to hire a composer for the latest season, and so they asked David what his thoughts, and he gave them my name. That's uh, awesome. so yeah, that's, and it's like most of my gigs are like that. Mm -hmm. So like I get an email, it's like, Hey, so-and-so recommended you, um, would you be interested, uh, mm -hmm. you know, or, or just like, 
we like the chat, please send us some music, you know, so it's that. So it's, but then also like we do demos. I get some demo opportunities through my agents. Um, mm -hmm. um, they pitch. I, I do, I do some cold emails too. Um, I'm trying to get better at that. Uh, <laughs> personally speaking, that's one of my goals for this. That's one of my uh, uh, New Year's resolutions. Goals? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Do more and be better at writing them. Uh, cold emails. <sighs> so yeah, it's just it's a mix. Um, mm -hmm. I also have composers, I have composer friends that I work with. Um, uh, you know, I I like to. We have, I have some friends that like, we just like to help each other out. Yeah. Um, uh, one of my closest friends for years, uh, names Allison Newman, Newman. Um, uh, she's co-scoring, um, uh, the latest season of, uh, the L word, or the last mm -hmm. the last ver variation of that show. I think they're in the third season now, mm -hmm. but, uh, we've, we went to USC together. We've, co-scored projects together we've co-scored some films together i've she's done additional music for me i've done additional music for her i've conducted for her um so it's just 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 like that and it's so that's part of it too like if another composer gets a job needs some help you know that's another another way to get some work yeah absolutely. Um, you know um so i mean i know that one of the questions that the people that have they're listening and watching this have is okay now you're already in the industry And of course, people referring you if you do a good job. But what, what about the first job? Like it's it's this chicken egg problem, right? You you have to get your first job, but you don't know who you ask. And then if you ask them, they say, "What have you done before?" And you haven't right. done anything. So it's like, oh, <laughs> this is the this is the question: How do you get your first gig so you can actually work uh, build on that? So right. how how did it work for you? Well, I um so. I got my first job job was working mm -hmm. as a, well, first of all, let me back. Let me, before we get into that, the advice I always give to young composers, find another composer to work for as an assistant. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you get real world experience, you meet people. Um, and um, I would say most composers are good people uh, when it yeah. comes to who to work for um but anyway my first job was working as an assistant to a composer named Stephen stern mm -hmm. um who unfortunately passed away a few years ago um but uh he co-founded his own music library called select tracks yes um and i got that job that was a referral uh i had just graduated from usc and um one of my professors He, he had reached out to one of my professors. He actually was taking composition lessons through the same teacher, uh -huh. uh, just privately. And um, uh, his name is Jack Smalley, uh, who I'm also passed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Legend. Legendary yeah. orchestrator. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, who also passed away a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, no, I don't mean to be a downer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um But, uh, yeah, Stephen reached out to Jack. He was like, hey, I need an assistant. Um, he was just starting, a, like, a being an assistant for the library, but also doing a directed video film and also a, a, a TV series uh, for TNT. Um, so, yeah, that was another. So I worked with Stephen and Selectrex for about about three years, mm -hmm. um, you know, doing assistant stuff, doing orchestrating, just, and it's like, you know, it's just, um, the great thing about doing music library stuff to begin with, uh, I worked on a lot of trailers, um, either writing or orchestrating first thing is that you learn, you kind of, it's kind of like a crash course in learning different styles and learning how to write quickly. Um, learning the different jobs, uh, like every, every job was something different. So I got to do, you know, got to be constantly pushed out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. as a composer, um, which was great. 
And um, yeah, I just learned so much. Um, and then I left, uh, I got another uh, assistant job um, uh, working for Craig Wedren, uh, mm-hmm. composer. He's currently, um, his latest project is Yellow Jackets on uh, Showtime. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But I worked with him for years um, as his assistant, uh, role models, uh, United States of Terra, Hung. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's the one that recommended me for Children's Hospital. Oh, nice. Um, okay. Yeah, the, the producers um, work with Craig a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. David Wayne is one of Craig's childhood best friends. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's... Uh, so children started as a web series it actually started, became out of the previous big writer strike in 2007. Wow. Wow. Um, so uh, your, your opportunity, man, you're right in the, right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. That's right. Awesome. <laughs> it's weird that I kind of owe, owe my career to the previous writer strike. It's a, it's a, it's a yes. bizarre, it's a bizarre feeling. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a, that was a web series. So it didn't count. Uh, for the WGA, I don't know mm-hmm. if it would. Uh, I don't know if it would count now during this strike. But anyway, um, and then it became one of the first shows to be picked up to make the transition from a web series to uh, an actual TV series on Adult Swim. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, and that, that, yeah, so that's how you get started. Like, just yeah, yeah I do recommend you know. Assist, you know, working as a composer's assistant, because um, mm-hmm. you just learned so much. Um, I, you know, I USC was fantastic. I do recommend uh, film scoring programs. Um, USC was fantastic, um, and you know, they helped. Uh, obviously, I just said they they helped me get my first job. That's Excuse awesome. Me. That's awesome. Um, yeah. And it's just been growing, just grinding from there. It's growing. <laughs> Taking new shows and yeah. new opportunities, meeting new people. Yeah, I think this is so, also one of the big biggies. I think being out there and like show yourself. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and how much of what you know now have you learned at UC? I don't. Well, let me ask the second part first, or answer mm-hmm. the second part first. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's necessary. I recommend it. Um, I. I think it just depends on the person, you know, mm-hmm. we all have our different paths. We all have our different needs as students uh, of composition. Like if we, um, so it's, it kind of depends on the person. Like I just mm-hmm. said, uh, I'm repeating myself. Um, things I learned in USC, USC was, it was a boot camp. Mm-hmm. It was a one year program, graduate t- certificate. Uh, I believe they changed it to a master's degree now. Mm-hmm, I think um, so too. Yeah, 2005, it was a mm-hmm. graduate graduate certificate. Um, but it's like they just really throw you in. I um, I didn't really know DAWs or DAWs mm-hmm. at the time. You know, before I started USC, I noodled around with Pro Tools, noodled around with Ableton. Um, and that program required all of us to uh, use Digital Performer. Mm-hmm. So I got to use, like got to know the ins and outs of that, <laughs> and got to know just oh, the gosh. DAW world. Yeah. Um, so there was that. I was um, learning a little bit about orchestration, orchestration specifically for you know film music. Um, so yeah, I think just you get like a little bit of everything. At USC, just like like, but like nuggets, like just enough mm-hmm. to get you started to keep learning, keep mm-hmm. growing from there. You know, learn about orchestration, learn about conducting, um, music prep. One of my other uh, little jobs after graduating, I did music prep for a little bit for a, a couple uh, scores mm-hmm. for a company called uh, Giuliani Music. Um, who's still around? They're, they're still mm-hmm. working, um, and. It's also, it's interesting because um, there are little differences in film scoring 
compared to the concert world. And it, it just not like major differences. Like it's not like it's a completely different <laughs> way of thinking about things, but it's, um, you know, just little things like uh, film scores on scoring stages, you know, don't use key signatures. Everything is in, in, in C with accidentals yeah. because it's easier to sight read. It's like, it's, it's something that like, you know, a concert composer yeah. would be like, what? No, what? that doesn't <laughs> right. make any sense. Wrong. You, you, need, you need you need key signatures. I'm looking yeah. at this piece by Beethoven that has key signatures. Exactly. Um, but it's like no, it's it's a it's all about little things like that that make recording easier and smoother. You know, and it's just it's all that. about timing, right? There's a lot. It's just so so much pressure and time pressure and like it has to be done and yeah. So I mean, exactly these these. these um, uh, Performers on the scoring stage, they made. I, I always like. I'm with my mouth open and like, wow, wow. Like they just, yeah, like, just played once and it's like, I don't know, mate. It's perfect. <laughs> it's, so it's, they're it so good. Uh, yeah, that just reminded me. Um, when I was re when we were recording the score to uh, How to Be a Latin Lover, mm -hmm. um, I did addition. You know, another thing I worked on with Craig Wedren. Um, mm -hmm. I did additional music and orchestration and conducting on that score and i was there was this one cue it's like this action cue that i wrote and um i was conducting it and i was like gobsmacked standing on the state on the stand and like you guys was that like a perfect first take oh, like oh, yeah. i i because usually like the first take it's like they're learning the cue And then, and then, like, if they make mistakes, every player knows what mistake they made and they know how to fix it for the next pass. Right. So you don't need to really, you really, unless there's, like, some catastrophic catastrophic event, mm -hmm. you don't need to dig in and, no. and you know, but, you're, but you kind of expect the first take to be a little rough because mm -hmm. they're learning the piece. Of course. And they're they're but just it's like, playing it for the first time, right? It's like... Yeah. But this beat, this cue had like an ostinato that went through the whole thing and that went mm -hmm. modulated and, and I was just like, oh wow, you guys are just crushing it. And it was just incredible. But like the you know you just you get great players, and um, they they can really, even though I know they're great players, even though I know I shouldn't be surprised, it was still very still, a, yeah. a pleasant surprise. Yeah, um, I mean anyway, no. One one thing is if you have recorded you know, hear your music for the first time like the first first time played by an orchestra this is like this is probably my most favorite moment ever in my career like wow this is just i love it i mean no no plugin i mean these get these get better and better no library can actually it's impossible it's just not the same thing if you play it on on whatever spitfire I love it. It's like, it's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's one of the best moments of mm. being a composer is hearing your stuff play live on the stage. I don't get to do it that much uh, anymore because Sure, I mean, yeah. With the little, these these comedies, they just, you know, have lower budgets um, and you just try to make do with the resources you have. But it's still fun. Mm -hmm. Um Now I just enjoy going to the mix and seeing the, hearing the, seeing the episodes, hearing the score and the sound design in like the best room it's ever going to sound in. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah, it's, <laughs> um, yeah, well, that's, that's fun. But it's all, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it can be a lot of work, but those moments, you know, where you conduct your, your score, where you hear your score live the first time. And yes, live is always better. Mm -hmm. um and uh or hear the music for the first time in the show or the yes. film that's yes. that's, the, that's well, the best that's the best part that's, right that's the best and part. isn't it also like as also in tv that you do not you don't have like final picture to, to score to right so you get basically the the yeah. unlocked picture yes but not like i don't know and then you see it for the first time how it's going to be airing on tv or you see it on tv and then um hear it all together the first time because there's probably no time to actually go over it many, many times. So, yeah. Yeah. Is TV's 
TV can be pretty tight. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's always a, it's always a, it's always a debate. Like how much do you, do you wait for lock? Do you start working with a pre-lock something that, you know, it's a cut that, you know, it's going to change. Yeah. Um, and it's every time it, it's, it's, um, I know some composers are kind of adamant that they wait for a lock. Um, um, I would say, especially in comedy, I, I did a lot of like comedy, like not comedy, but animated TV shows, like kids stuff. Yeah. And this is brutal if they change something because it was Mickey, like one of them was Mickey Mousing all the way through. Yeah. And combined with songs and like, it was a nightmare and they had like, we had three shows doing, we did three episodes in one week, like, like revisions from the episode from the week before the actual episode. And then, um, uh, what was the other thing? Like, I think just spotting the other episode. So it was a nightmare, but yeah, they did a good job to mostly give us good picture, but sometimes they had to like change it completely. And uh, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, I know it's rough and it's, it's yeah, it's part of the job. Um, yeah, true. But, you know, film is a little different because the film you usually have more time and you're mm-hmm. kind of usually expected to work on um, a cut that's still in in progress, still in flux. Yeah. I I will say I I try to gauge um, you if I get a if we get a rough cut or mm-hmm. uh, or, or um, um, an in progress cut. Um, I try to gauge, you know, how much work there is to do, how much time there is before the expected lock cut, and then how much time after that before the mix. Mm-hmm. So it just it becomes like a kind of a game time decision of, um, yeah. uh, you know, if I decide to, you know, if I'm gonna start working um yeah on a on an unlock cut like if it's going to be in tv schedules are so tight if it's going to be like a week before the lock comes <laughs> i'm not going to sit around and do nothing no. for a week you know no. and so it's um it might as well keep going and i would say um conforms are generally easy <laughs> mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, I not always sometimes there are bad ones with a lot of mickey mouse thing you have to change all the timings um but uh yeah so it's it just depends like like how much how do you want to use your time like exactly like might as well just i generally feel like might as well just use the time get some running done you know let's mm-hmm. not wait to the last second exactly. um also, like, try to get a sense of if they send you a cut and they say it's not locked yet, try to get them to tell you, okay, what's changing? You know, is it a specific scene? Is it yeah. little tweaks here and there? Because um, we've gotten... Um, I also work on Harley Quinn, um, uh, the animated show for mm-hmm. HBO Max. Mm-hmm. It's another composer that I help out on, uh, a friend of mine, Jefferson Friedman. Mm-hmm. Um you know, sometimes we'll spot to an unlocked cut and they'll say, oh, we're, we're, we're reworking the opening. So it's like everything after the five minute mark is going to be fine. You know, it's <laughs> not going to change or roughly, yeah. no, they say. Um, so, you know, so you can, you can kind of get a sense. Um, so, yeah, it, 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 it just comes down to, you know, moment to moment decisions yeah. like that yeah and, right. and, and also like you know, another thing going back to your earlier question about like things i learned at usc mm-hmm. it's so crucial to learn how to organize a score wow yeah um you know it's you're kind of you know because you, you can there's different ways you can tackle a score you can you can work on um, and I, I'll change it up every, like every episode, like how I approach, just depending on the episode, yeah. depending on what I feel like, you know, do you score, you know, uh, uh front to back, do you, mm-hmm. do you start, you, know, do you go cue by cue? 
Uh, do you start with the biggest climactic cue first? Mm-hmm. Um, so you know where that's, I try to do that. Um, so yeah, that's another thing that's, I think that's crucial. That's, I think a little different than mm-hmm. the concert world. Maybe not too different. Like if you're working on like a multi-movement piece, mm-hmm. um, you know, you may, it's just, but everyone's different. Everyone has different approaches, but it's, it's, I mean, it's cool. my kids like to save the best part of the meal for la- to, for last. Or mm-hmm. One of them does. One of them just eats it right up front. So I try like to compare to this, like, do you want to like have the fun part in the beginning or do you want to like wait until you have all the hard stuff out of the way and then you can have some fun in the, in the end. But um, it's interesting. But what I wanted to like, I mean, through t- streaming Netflix and all that, the TV world changed dramatically, right? Also mm-hmm. like how, how TV series are produced. They're basically eight hour long movies. These yeah. days, right it, it yeah. was yeah. always like that but now it's like you can watch it in one go if you want they go back sometimes hbo got what, what are we watching like hijack i think they did it again like they have like one episode a week which is kind of weird like if you're used to binging I didn't, I, yeah but um how was it with uh, miracle workers is it did they like the whole show in one go or did you and then now now you're done or do you score it like week week after week Miracle Workers is interesting is that um, with the schedule, we baked in a lot of lead time. Mm-hmm. So I think we um, we still kind of worked week to week, episode to episode. It was, it was in episodic order, I think. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Um, this latest season of Harley, we actually had a, an episode swapped around. Mm-hmm. We worked on an earlier episode later and it, that one change is like messed with our brains. Um, <laughs> uh, that's where the or- score organization comes in handy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they can, you can be flexible. Um, and we, we started really early in the process, like a couple started with the first episode and we also like, um, so I never worked with these showrunners before. They were new uh, clients for me. Um, and I was also pretty sure I might might have been there. It was the show's first composer. I think I might have also been the showrunner's first composer they worked with. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Um, okay. So, yeah. So it was a lot of um, getting to know each other um, and also playing around with the tone of the score. We... Uh, like we had a meeting and we kind of knew the general vibe of the show, what they were going for. I could, they were kind of going for this, you know, uh, if you've seen the trailer, uh, it's, it's a kind of a Mad Max, uh, post-apocalyptic vibe. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what they were going for. Um, again, this eighties VHS, mm-hmm. uh, vibe with like synths and, but there's also parodies that need orchestra and, um, comedic cues uh so it's the it was a lot the first month was a lot of just playing around with different ideas for the score um i pitched an idea with a which was close um then they gave me no time then it was like a couple maybe about three rounds of ideas um we tried some stuff that just did not work <laughs> like hey what about this idea well, okay i'll try it uh, i mean yeah no. you have to Get there somehow, yeah, true. Yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. And I, I actually like that too. Mm-hmm. Um, so many, so many like demos I do. People are like looking for a composer to like just solve the score immediately. Yes, and like no, hey, like let's collaborate. This is a collaborative that's, art. Let's work sense. together. Let's like that's figure sense. something out that's like interesting and cool. Um. It'd be great if, yeah, you know, it's like, hey, if I not if I knock out the part of, on my first try, great. If yeah. not, if it's close, then let's work on it. Yeah. And that's what we did. We worked on it. Um, kind of settled on, on a tone of the score. Is a little bit of synth. Another thing was like they wanted synth score, um, and finding the right synth was interesting. <laughs> um, and I. 
a lot of trial and error on that. I um, started uh, referencing 80 scores by like Giorgio Moroder and John Carpenter. Um, their sins tend to be a little dirtier, um, grungier. I don't mean that in the negative. It's just like more processing, a little bit more saturation. Um, I think my first pass was a little too clean, a little too like modern 80s. Yeah. yeah so it was a little too clean um, and bright. So it was just a lot of things like that. Like, like let's play around with different sounds, different types of processing. Um, I was like, I have a, a composer on my team that I work with a lot, uh, Greg Martin, uh, who's a fanta- fantastic guitar player. Mm-hmm. Um, but he really helped you know, we like work together and figure out what these sounds should be. Yeah. So there's a lot of, you know, old Juno sounds and old Triton sounds. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, just like <laughs> kind of cheesy sounds yeah. to the, to these, they're not, not, no, not in a bad way, but like, you know, it's like, normally you stay um, clear of them if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Like, <laughs> I, yeah. How many, how many people actually use a, a Triton anymore? Exactly. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but uh it was perfect for this score it, it worked That's really awesome. well um and, and, and yeah and also like the junkyard instruments uh, a little bit inspired by the mad max beyond thunderdome score mm-hmm. which has this big sweeping orchestra but also kind of primal percussion almost mm-hmm. like um planet of the apes type percussion so like okay yeah 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 let's let's do that and there's also like it worked because the main setting of the season is in a in a junkyard. Steve Buscemi plays a junk dealer, so nice. it's it's great. great. That's awesome. And um, how, how long was the lead time? That was about who I want to say it was a couple months, mm-hmm. two maybe three months, mm-hmm. and then but then when they started mixing the episodes, um, they were doing two episodes a week. So it was, yeah, so like I had to, which was interesting because I had to make sure I had to plan out my schedule Mm -hmm. that I wasn't waiting to the last second. Because if I, if I was waiting to the last second, then I'd be in trouble. Two a week or the last. We actually, uh, Murderville uh, was an insane schedule. That was two episodes a week with no lead time. It was, it was just like, just dive right in. Like, okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, mm-hmm. but, but this is uh, impossible to do without a team, right? Do you have a team that you work with? I have a team. I have a little bit of a team. Uh, Greg mm-hmm. is my go-to. Mm-hmm. He started off as my go-to guitarist. Mm-hmm. Um, fantastic guitarist. And uh, we've been working together a lot lately. Um, uh, we're doing more co-scoring together. Um, uh, Miracle, yeah, he did additional music on Miracle Workers and helped me with sounds, helped me with guitar. Um, so yeah, it's everyone has a team. It's crucial to have a team. Yeah. Um, yeah, we we co-scored these a couple of years ago. We did these um, promos, comedic promos, long-form comedic promos for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, mm-hmm. uh, the game. And uh, we co-scored that, and it was so much fun. And it was, it's, 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 but yeah, yeah, like everyone has a team, and it's just, um, it's, it's also nice to just have someone to bounce ideas off of. You know, it's like, hey, oh, how, yeah. what do you think? Does this just work? Did I? Does this sound like anything? Did I accidentally rip some someone off? <laughs> um, that's always my biggest fear because my mm-hmm. I tend to write fairly simple melodies. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, oh, please don't tell me. <laughs> please don't tell me. I like. I'm just remembering a melody and then writing it down. Yeah. But uh, th- thankfully, <laughs> most thankfully, of the time it works. Yeah. Most of the time it works, and then like, uh, you know, people know that they could tell me. Like, I, and mm-hmm. thankfully, I don't. I don't. Knock on wood. Fingers crossed. <laughs> hasn't been a problem yet yeah. um oh, gosh this is the biggest fear yeah. right oh gosh oh. someone someone noticing it and actually going on going to court for this this is uh i know it's it's bad. not especially like you know all of us 
we're composers because we love music. Mm-hmm. We listen to a lot of music. We have a lot of music just living in our heads right. that we've listened to our, all our entire lives. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, when I'm writing, I go for a walk and I'll just run a scene in my head trying to come up with a melody or a mm-hmm. concept. So it's, you know, when it, that happens, you know, like I just said, it's like, did I come up with it? Mm-hmm. Or am I just remembering something? You know, exactly. it's, um, so, I mean, I'm usually, yeah, sorry. Uh, no, uh, I come from commercials and this is where it's basically daily bread to, to rip someone off. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. To, to write something that's, that's already there, but they don't have the budget to actually pay for the real, de- real deal. So mm-hmm. um, I, this is, this was hard. I, I mean, there were so many lawyers involved, involved all the time. Because in the end, it, it's a it's a judge that decides if it's actually if it's actually a rip off or not. So this is yeah. like uh, yeah. this is such a thin line. And but these days, I just say no most of the time if they want something. One that one, yeah. one time yeah. one time they want they wanted something for me. I think it was smells like Teen Spirit. Yeah. But only with guitar, nothing else. I'm like, uh-huh. how's this gonna go? <laughs> Right. It's impossible. It's so simple, and if you want this feeling of smells like Teen Spirit, it always it it will always be too close. Yeah, and it it's I think it's not a um, legacy that you want to like uh, mess with. No, no, Kurt Cobain no, and the, the inheritance. Yeah, so yeah, um, the, yeah, I I know that. Well, <laughs> that it's interesting because like with these comedies, I do so many parodies. Right. Like, yes. you know, it's, which I guess gives us a little bit of a leeway because, you know, if the show is parroting something, I can also parody the score of the mm-hmm. thing that it's parroting. Um, and so really give a little bit of wiggle room for that. But like mm-hmm. someone could just, you know, decide yeah. that they, they think the parody is too close. Exactly. Yeah. And, in um, the end, it's always us that are in for it, right? If if we do something yeah. like that, I mean, this is probably in all of the contracts that if we um, like infringe a copyright, then it's our problem. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Um, so who who else is on your team? Like you said, Greg, um, and then is Greg. There like, mm-hmm. Greg has been my main guy, mm-hmm. a great person on my team. Um, for the past few years, um, you know, he's been my guitarist for a long time. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, starting with COVID and that Assassin's Creed promo, that's when we really started writing together. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did some more stuff like that. Um, uh, um, anyway, um, Ali Newman. Um, mm-hmm. who, yes. who I mentioned earlier uh, as a frequent yes mm-hmm. USC my closest friends um, she's been a member of my team for or we member of each other's team uh, for years I, um, I love that you just share all these that you actually really help each other out that's, that's really really uh, special I think yeah I think so too if you, look, um, if you look in from the outside you feel like okay everyone has their own little universe and their own little kingdom and they not, they want want not anyone to go too near to that because they have, have fear of like losing a client or yeah I don't know. It's, but this is this is really cool that you do this this way i love that oh thank you thank you yeah i i try to be transparent and like you know there are some composers who do every they want to do everything themselves um um and there's there's some composers that hire ghost writers, unfortunately. Um, but like everyone knows, composers have teams. You know, yeah. everyone knows that. Really, with a handful of exceptions, composers can't do everything themselves. Um, yeah. Um, and it's it's so it's. I think there's also been a more. Um, shift in the culture of just composers giving you're seeing a lot more co-scoring credits mm-hmm. um 
on on show on shows and movies. Um, um, and you know, I'm trying to give it better that to uh, speaking with Greg about Greg. Um, it was it was it was it was a fine line between with him with those additional music or co co composing. I I I probably should have um fought for that. Um mm-hmm. but I kinda of regret that. But it was, so, it, was, it, was, it, was tough, it was a tough call. This is curiosity, uh, it, just yeah. my curiosity. Who decides what what is additional music and what is co writing? Don't, don't you that? Don't you do that? Or? The the main composer is decides. supposed to, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, and it kind of depends. Like it's, um, because I've done additional music before, where I've like I've done a lot of work, mm-hmm. um, and um, but it's it's also a fine line. It's up to the main composer. It's up to the the um, relationship the composer has with the producers. Mm-hmm. Um. Um, and it, it's tough. It's it's really tough because like you you you're the main composer. You get hired. It's your score. You're the director of the score, mm-hmm. right? It, they're your ideas right. for the most part, mm-hmm. and you bring on someone else to help realize those ideas. And I think you know, like um, Stephen, the first composer I worked for, he came out of um. Remote control, Hans Zimmer. Um, mm-hmm. He was it, was it was called Media Ventures at the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and actually, his studio was where was in Hans's first studio oh, in uh, uh, Century City. Um, that's but yeah, and I I think it's there. There is there's always been. I think this culture is changing. Mm-hmm. You know, when I grew up. When I grew up, when I came up through, <laughs> uh, I'm not awake yet. Uh, <laughs> when, I, when I came up through the business, you know, it was always the the main composer. It's their score. You're there to help. Um, they they give you directions. I, I think the better uh, composers for additional music, they'll give you like, okay, here's I wrote this theme. Use this to generate another cue. Um, uh, I know Hans. Uh, I don't know if he still does, but um, maybe he still does. Uh, you know, when I was in school, I learned that he likes to write a suite, like a condensed version of the full mm-hmm. score, mm-hmm. and then he oversees filling out the blanks, the the, the full score. Yeah, so yeah. it's like there's additional mu- there's additional composers, but they're working with his material. material. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so what kind of credit yeah. would that be then? This would be just no credit, actually, right? That would be additional music. Okay. Um, yeah, with credit. Um, TV is a little weird. You mm-hmm. actually don't really see additional music credits in TV. Um, uh, I tried to get Greg an additional music credit for Miracle Workers. Um, it didn't work out. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was more just like a room for the credit. Uh, the yeah. the show they did they do. It's one of those shows where they the credits play over the final scene. Uh, like it's not it's not like cut to black credits. Yeah. The credits uh-huh. just keep playing. So they're they're look pretty limited on what uh, uh, space they could do. So that that was the reason I uh, I was told. Um, now I'm like burying my soul. <laughs> <laughs> That's so interesting um, that a physical constraint makes additional music or not that's interesting yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know it's only a credit if it's on in the credits right in the end right yeah and you know it's like um there's a thing that lately i my agent was telling me this the other day it's like who really watches the credits anymore you know, as long as it's on IMDb correctly, mm-hmm. as long as someone can look it up and 
say like, oh yeah, this person did work. And, uh, and that's why I try to, I've always been this way. I try to be pretty transparent about my team. Like I try to put my ego aside and this happened a few times on Children's Hospital and also on Miracle Workers. Well, someone will say, oh, I love that cue. I'm like, oh, thanks. That's, that was my, that was Greg. Oh, that was Allie. That's, mm-hmm. that's one of their cues. They, they, they knocked out of the park. Like I, I, I always, I do my best to try to like be transparent yeah. with my team. And, uh, and it, you know, it's, it's, um, I'll be honest, I'm trying to be better at it. I'm trying to be, um, uh, I'm trying to look for ways that I could improve. Um, I know Allie and Greg, they do want, they want to do more co-scoring too. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, great. Yeah, we'll do that. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Um, but, uh, but you know it's tough because it's it's also tough to shake that the you know, the the you know the you learn like I just said you know coming up you learn the lead composer it's their score yeah you're the helper whether you're doing additional music or orchestration or or what um, so when I first started I came up I, that's that was my perspective Mm -hmm. and i like i'm really i'll be blatantly honest i uh i'm trying to shake that mentality Mm -hmm. like no no we're all working together it's um so it's but it's it's like it's it's hard to shake that it's all it's also like ego too you know it's Mm -hmm. like i mean it's um, it's also again it's a thin line you know first i mean you help the lead composer and without you, he had a big. You would have. They would have a big problem, right? So yeah. that yeah. you have to. It, this has to be acknowledged not only through payment or whatever, but also like furthering your career. And if a lead composer is decent, they would actually come. I f- I feel like they would actually come to you and say, okay, I think now it's time that we share some of the credits. Yeah. And and then on the other hand, if you if you're the lead composer. There's also a thin line in terms of, okay, I worked for this for 20 years. Now someone else comes in and I have to somehow find a way to give them the credit they deserve, but also not take away too much of my credit because, yeah. and this the ego part that you were talking about. And I think between ego and humbleness, there is a, there's a way to actually, um, or a humility, there's a way to, um, to make this work. But I told you, it's a little bit of a dilemma, I think. Yeah, I know. But unless you yeah, like, because not caring about it, it's probably doesn't do you any good. And in the end, doesn't do any additional music composer or Coke score and nothing good, really. So it's like, yeah. eh, I have to think about something good there. Yeah. And it's, the, and it's up to everyone. It's like, it, it's, it just, it differs from project to project. Like, mm-hmm. um, um, yeah and, and sometimes yeah so it's like it was interesting like i would say to craig what going back to craig wedron my me doing additional music for him um we were working on uh this film called dog days mm-hmm. and we were working on it for a little bit and um to his credit he goes you know what this is co-composing isn't it I'm like, yeah, I kind of think it is. So oh, it's like, awesome. so, so like then, then he had to, he was able to make those contracts, you know, change the contract, change my name in the credits. Uh, they spelled my name wrong a couple of times. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Eventually got it worked out in the end. Uh-huh. But I was like, oh, thank you for the credit. I appreciate it. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. That's um, awesome. I had to, I did it once. Uh, there's an episode we, uh, Ali and I, um, uh, same studio that did Children's Hospital. There was this uh, streaming series, which is, I think, now an orphan show. I don't think you can watch it anywhere. Mm-hmm. Called Filthy Preppy Teens. Very funny. Um, but I was, at the time we were working, I was working on this. I was all for the same production company. So I wasn't, doing any shenanigans mm-hmm. um uh so i was doing the final season of children's hospital and a pilot which i was co-scoring with greg 
uh, all at the same time. So wow. three shows at the same time. And it worked out really well. But this one episode of Filthy Private Teens, I, I just said, like, hey, Allie, just can you just take this episode? Just can you just do it? I'll get the credit changed. And getting that, man, uh, getting that contract change, it was kind of a nightmare. Wow. <laughs> like, so it's like, uh, and so it's, I'm trying to do the right thing here. Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Wow. But, uh, um, but that worked out, worked out real well. Um, That's awesome. That, yeah, that Filthy Property Teeth, it was a really funny show. Um, but it, it started on full screen and then it went to Verizon Go 90, which then folded. Mm -hmm. And now it's just gone. Just Somewhere. gone. Just Lost gone. in the ether somewhere. Yeah. Oh, exactly. That's, that's, <laughs> that's sad. Yeah. But, uh, but your new show is airing, when do you say on Thursday? Tomorrow? Monday. 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 Oh. Monday night, July 10th. Nice, nice. And uh, <coughs> where, where is it? Where is it? Where is it airing? It's gonna be airing on TBS. Mm -hmm. um, it's a two-episode premiere. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I think it starts uh, 7 p.m. Pacific time, 10 p.m. Eastern time. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be playing internationally too. Um, I don't have the details on that. I think there is a snap. So. <laughs> um, it was originally supposed to come out on, in January, uh, and then Warner Brothers and TBS decided to postpone it. Mm -hmm. But they, there was a little bit of snafu that the first episode actually still premiered in Europe and I think Australia. Oh wow! And I think that was on HBO Max, uh, which nice. is where the previous seasons of the show live. Uh, um, nice. Okay. So I, I think it's it's. Uh, at least I, I think that's in uh, your people, your listeners are going to have just, I, I, I'm sorry. I have the, I think I saw somewhere on where on Reddit that I think Canada, the previous seasons were on CTV. Uh -huh. um, I wish I was more familiar with, <laughs> I you know I really should be more familiar with markets outside of the United States. I shouldn't be. <laughs> oh yeah. I should, but yeah, I should be uh, just oblivious. If, but. So if I can, I will watch it. And will the score be released as well? No, unfortunately, um, we tried to get permission from TBS to mm -hmm. produce a soundtrack album mm -hmm. and just could not get it. I think because it's with the Warner Brothers Discovery merger, I think there's a, there's been going a lot of uh, changes Um Maybe I'll keep working on it. Maybe a, a, a future release. I am planning to put some stuff on my website okay, and my cool. Instagram. Yeah. Um, so uh, for free because I yes. can't sell it. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So I, there will be some music out there. I'm going to do my best to at least get, get it out in the ether. Mm -hmm. um, I also should say the show itself is an anthology. Uh, they do a completely different oh. storyline every season. Oh, wow. Same cast, roughly the same cast. Um, there's similar character dynamics every season between the cast. Um, but your audience, people don't need to watch the previous seasons previous to season. enjoy the new season. Okay. They should, because it's, it's really good. Uh, it's, it's real funny. Mm -hmm. um, but... Um, don't yeah it don't, don't feel like you need to like get caught up on the previous seasons to enjoy uh miracle that's workers and times that's awesome. because it's there's uh there's some similarities but nothing plot wise mm -hmm. it's just like just character dynamics you know? nice. weirdly character growth mm -hmm. between the same act actors that's throughout awesome. the seasons it's, it's kind of now, I, now i'm intrigued to see everything <laughs> yeah, yeah, they should. Um, well, I, I I don't know how much time we have, but uh, yeah. when I uh, when I got initially, the show had been on my list. I have a massive list of shows, like we probably all do, shows and movies mm -hmm. that we want to watch mm -hmm. when the time presents itself. 
It never does, like, unfortunately. Oh my gosh, it's my list is just massive. Getting like, longer and longer. Yeah, there's just so much stuff. Like, oh, I'm just never going to see that, right? Yeah, I'm just never going to watch that show. Got I accept okay. that. It's okay. It's okay. I... Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but so the show had been my list forever. But when I got the email that they wanted to discuss me coming on as the composer, I'm like, okay, great. Yeah, I love the show. And then I. Then we, we booked the time for the interview, and then my wife and I binged all three seasons so we, over the weekend. Up to date. Like, yeah, yes, awesome. up to date. Got it. Got it. Uh, <laughs> That's good. Turned out it wasn't necessary because it's an anthology. <laughs> like it doesn't. Yes. Yeah. It, but um, um, it's it's a lovely show. I, it's really funny. The characters are great, mm -hmm. um, but uh, and the acting acting is great. I mean, Daniel Radcliffe and mm -hmm. Steve Buscemi and like. They just love doing it. They just love doing the show. That's awesome. and you can tell. You can tell they're just having so much fun. Mm -hmm. That's so really it cool. Comes yeah. But, uh, awesome. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much for your time, Matt. Thank you, Sebastian. Uh, even though great. you ha had these issues with the allergies, but uh, you did great. <laughs> thank you so much for staying on and um, making it happen. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. I, um, I'm glad. Thank you for, for bearing with me. Absolutely, and I, I'm looking forward to hear your score uh, um, uh, for um, um, Miracle Workers soon on your website. So, and yes. and I will tune into TBS on Monday. Looking Great. forward to 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 watch. Yeah, awesome, man. I hope you like it. I hope yeah, like it. I will let you know. <laughs> okay, please. <laughs> yes. um, cool. Thank you so much for for being here, and have a great rest of your day back to work 